Bay City is an old logging town situated on the Saginaw River. Um, the population is about 35,000. We have a great educational system. We have nice walkable downtown with lots of shops. We have a great entertainment district. And it's just a great place to live. Well, Bay City is quite remarkable because it has about 250 homes on the National Register of Historic Structures. Recently, they have identified another 1,750 homes that they are documenting, volunteers are documenting, photographing to submit to the National Register. Such an extraordinary collection. Uh, there, there really isn't uh, a collection of Victorian architecture uh, that exists like, like Bay City possesses uh, in the state or perhaps even the Midwest. If you really look at these houses, they're just beautiful. They will never be recreated again. Uh, turn of the century, uh, just gorgeous Victorian type houses that we're hoping uh, to, um, you know, to get restored. So there's an effort being made to restore those homes, to, to convert them from multiple family homes back to single family homes, and to preserve that fantastic heritage of these lovely homes that were built when Bay City was the lumber capital of the world. There was a period of time when our population jumped from 2,000 to 30,000. It grew very quick. It was the busiest port on Lake Huron at one time and was growing at the same pace as Chicago. Where we're standing is nine stories high in the 185-foot tower of Bay City City Hall. The City Hall was built to the size that it is uh, because the town fathers back in the 1890s considered the Bay City was going to be as large as Chicago. So they built a city hall to match their ideas and ambitions. The first great crop here was the trees they found when those first settlers got in here. It was some of the best trees in the country. Right after that, of course, the speculators come in from New York and start buying up land at a dollar quarter an acre and harvesting the trees. And the trees flowed out to, to build Baltimore and Philadelphia and parts of New York State. When it was all done, we didn't have any trees and we didn't have any money. There was hardly any left. They just clear cut everything. And so that was gone about 1888. And so that's when we had to import timber from Canada. This was the edge of civilization. It was the largest community going north. So those lumberjacks, those shanty boys working in the woods all winter long, six day weeks, 12 hour days, they got paid one time a year. And they would come out of the woods into Bay City, into an area of town on Water Street that became known as Hell's Half Mile. There were supposedly dozens of bars, dance hall here in the old European hotel, which is called the Catacombs, and many other saloons, the Blood Tub, the Idaho, all kinds of crazy places. Now they've covered over some of the buildings, some of the brick, which is too bad, but uh, you can get the flavor of it. One of the things that remains from that era is several of the buildings. Like so many communities, they have the typical story is they built the downtown out of wood. At some point it burns down and they build a new town, downtown out of, you know, brick and stone. And that happened fairly early on here. So we've got buildings left from that lumber era. We've got uh, uh, this, the historic State Theater in downtown, which has had different names and different uh, types of uh, theaters in it, but now is just a real jewel. We have one of the two Moorish-themed Masonic buildings. Uh, the biggest one north of Detroit is located in our community. It's never torn down. Uh, we've got uh, just your basic storefronts. The hotels that those lumberjacks stayed in during the lumber drives in Hell's Half Mile still stand. One of them today is St. Lawrence Nuthouse, but uh, in its original time, that was called the New European Hotel. Across the street where the Antique Center is today, that was once Campbell House, and it's a place where you know people would get lodging. Some of these, you might think because they were lumberjacks that these were rundown places. Some of them were very elegant with ballrooms and interior dining and atriums and 
uh, in their day were very fancy buildings and we're lucky that in our community we have not only some of those but we also have the great housing stock that exists out Center Avenue and 5th Street and 6th Street on either side. All the, the great houses that we're lucky in our community, many of them are still single family dwellings or just were never torn down. You know, in town they call them the Lumber Baron Mansions, but the Lumber Barons actually did not live in Bay City. That's why the money left our community. All those big homes were actually uh, the merchants of the town, your, your shipbuilders, the people that started the banks, uh, the, the hardware store owners. You can imagine the amount of materials that had to be sold in this community to support that lumber industry just to our north. So hardware stores and suppliers of all sorts of products uh, were big and of course they made great money and they built the great houses and of course they had great craftsmen here this was a community that knew how to do things with wood so when it became time to build houses they knew what they were doing they had the best wood to pick from uh, and so the homes are really treasures a couple things make these homes valuable they're they're beautiful their state-of-the-art construction at the time they were built when you look at these houses, they've got a wild factor to them. The craftsmanship is, I mean, they aren't drywall. They aren't uh, molding that's bought, you know, at the hardware store and cut at 90 degree angles and put around the windows. All this stuff shows the touch of a craftsman's hand. And it's a quality of work. It's a nature of work that doesn't get done so much because of the expertise involved and the expense involved. So because these houses look so great and look like they once did, uh, they're stunningly beautiful to look at. This is the uh, Joseph Turner home. It was built by Joseph and Eliza Turner in uh, uh, 1889. It took about three years to build. Uh, Turner owned one of the sawmills uh, in downtown Bay City, so had access to all the artisans and uh, woodstock. The, all of the oak, uh, it's, it's oak and uh, cherry. Uh, uh, in this house and uh, all of the oak is quarter saw oak, uh, meaning just the heart of the uh, logs was used. Uh, elaborate wood floors, uh, the uh, detailing on uh, all of the woodwork is uh, extraordinary. This was the mercantile counter of the Crump's General Store in Pinconning uh, during its uh, tenure, which was 1860 to 1930. When they closed that store in 1930, this uh, countertop went into the Crump family barn uh, until about five years ago when we spotted it and uh, bought it and restored it and uh, now using it in its present state. There are probably a couple hundred houses of this caliber in uh, Bay City and then maybe one uh, rung down in quality. There are probably a thousand houses like that in Bay City. It's a really quite extraordinary. And they were all built in that lumber boom era. One of the things that works against the quality of the housing stock is we have a lot of absentee landlords. They rent out to people who are at the lower end of the economic scale. They don't have the resources to fix up a house that they're renting that they don't own, and the owner lives in another community. That works against the efforts to better the housing stock because the guy that owns the house doesn't see it. He doesn't have a hands-on interest in it. Uh, now this area is Grant Place, and at one time it was quite an elite area. It's a little bit run down now. A lot of homes been converted to apartments. Now some entrepreneurs and some developers are coming in, buying up these houses, restoring them. This particular house is the Newell Eddy house, quite a historic house. Mr. Eddy was part of a shipbuilding and lumber family here in Bay City. A few years ago when we started uh, acquiring uh, these houses and rehabbing them and, and uh, our goal there is to return that uh, that street to Grant Place and perhaps even rename it Grant Place. Uh, it's, a, it's really a fine collection of architecture. What we're doing is turning them back to a original single dwelling family homes and then after we're done with those, we'll, we'll sell those. You know, why buy a half a million dollar home out in a cornfield in Saginaw when you can have the, you know, for half the price, the original, real 130 year old, 150 year old homes.
There are a number of efforts that are going on that are very good efforts that hopefully will spread and uh, stop this deterioration of, uh, of our housing stock and, of course, blight, which follows. And as people over the years have become more and more aware of what treasures those are, more and more restoration and preservation of those buildings is going on. And that's an expensive proposition, so when somebody makes the commitment to take their building and make it like it used to be or make it historic, that's uh, quite a commitment that they're making to the community to spend the extra money to do a historic preservation rather than just put up aluminum siding and slap paint on it. We're currently under construction. We're hoping to be open within the next two months. Um, the home was built and completed in 1885 by Judge Webster. He lived here until he was 92. In 1942, he passed away. And the house was then turned into a boarding school for women, um, and then later turned into apartments, and then um, closed down and was privately owned after that. We actually purchased an old church pew. Um, we we're thinking maybe 100 years old and used that wood to put into the foyer of the base of the stairs. Um, so the wood was the same type. And if you'll notice the gold tin ceilings, it's not original gold, but they, uh, it is a tin ceiling. It's in wonderful shape for being about 130 years old. This is from the original paper hanger from October 1888. He signed the law before the paper was put up. It was about two years ago. Um, it was a bed and breakfast, and the previous owner started renovating the attic uh, for his bed and breakfast, and um, we've kind of completed the project. We're trying to complete the project. So the vision of the Front Porch Renaissance Group uh, is to restore these fine old homes to places that are healthier uh, socially for children to grow and families and neighbors to gather. And uh, I think we can do that neighborhood at a time. And what I find is when, when I sit on my front porch here, people stop by. They walk down the street and they come up on the porch and sit down and talk. And that happens in the neighborhoods in Bay City. That's what really makes this community unique. Uh, in addition to the residential architecture, we have tremendous uh, uh, architectural heritage in our churches and public buildings and, and business pockets. A lot of communities have deterioration in their downtown. Bay City, of course, has a few empty storefronts and turnover. Uh, the fact is we don't have uh, full blocks of empty, decaying buildings. Uh, it's a great walking community, shopping, huge entertainment district uh, with uh, lots of pubs and restaurants all located in an area. Uh, old time uh, family owned businesses that still remain in Bay City are uh, interesting uh, and uh, this is not any town USA for sure. We have this incredible history. We have a great history of arts, uh, of accomplishment, of industry uh, that just doesn't get told. It's, it's reasonable to live here. It's an interesting place to be. It's friendly and there's a lot of culture and entertainment and things to do. So those are the reasons why I live here and why a lot of folks uh, we've found in recent years have been moving in. You know, it's what it's all about, bringing people back to Bay City, um, to live here, to grow old here. Um, you know, this is just a small start of that. So at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is build community through restoration. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to use the, the rich, architecture of the city 
to build the infrastructure, the social infrastructure that will bring Bay City back to its former grandeur and create a city that, that allows the, the social connection that used to be common in our country. We need to build community and it is the architecture that will help us recapture the close-knit community that is healthy for our families and our, our children.